Welcome, Lindsay. Thanks so much for coming. I always delight to have women on panels because um, they're just a bit more few, few and far between than um, in the general startup world. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about Lunar Capital and what you guys do and what your focus is. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me, by the way. So Luna Capital is a digital assets fund that we started mid-2017. Uh, I have two co-founders, Travis Go, who co-founded CoinSource, which is the world's largest Bitcoin ATM, and Michael Mazzotta, who's been a fund manager for 10 plus years, and uh, me, who was the head of cryptocurrency research at Precursor Ventures prior to this. Oh, wow. And uh, we primarily focus on directed acyclic graphs and scalability coins. And these are just basically new gen protocols. I spun this fund out of Precursor Ventures where I used to work and they were kind of like our anchor investors and we have about 30 now. Right, right, fantastic. And um, I, I, sorry, I was wondering um, what you think about what's happening with the cryptocurrency exchanges at the moment because there's just so many dramas going on. And this morning I woke up and there was another article about DragonX being hacked and <laughs> in Singapore and I'm like, oh, my God, it's just never ending almost lately. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, I think that this space is still really early and some of these exchanges have done some really great things to make this market a lot bigger. However, on the regulation part, it is very difficult to trust an exchange right now or to just make a trade and feel like this company is going to hold your assets safely. Uh, I think when the government comes in and starts making more mandatory laws around exchanges and everything and more big corporations start building legitimate things, uh, everything will be more legitimatized and people will lose less money. I think this is kind of a traditional way of a big market. I think a lot of markets that become really huge and just a normal way of life kind of start off like this. It's like the Wild West at the moment, though, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I remember the days when or I... Or gold rush or something. Yeah. I definitely remember the days when I got on the exchanges and I never had to put in my name or my social security number. Uh, it was just definitely the Wild Wild West. I never really saw it as something that would be legitimatized this soon. Actually, I yeah. still think we're extremely early. And yeah. even though I got in 2013 and knew about it before... I knew it was something extremely complicated that the government uh, was not going to figure out anytime soon. And it's just because it's so, it's not completely anonymous, but people have used it for anonymous like things and uh, definitely difficult to do AML KYC. I think AML KYC is one of the largest struggles that exchanges, admins, and banks truly have in this space. So they're trying to figure that out right now. Yeah, I think it's been an outlier community really. and. Um all these dramas seem to be related to the fact that, you know, they're coming into the mainstream and it, it isn't um, the same as being in outliers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> what do you think needs to happen uh, now to um, restore some sort of safety and um, trust in the general public? I think people need to start building things and unfortunately people can't build faster than the price movement. And that's a difficult part and why people really focus on that price more so. And mm. I think when more volume starts coming to the space, things will become more steady. It's been extremely volatile. It's really hard for companies to actually focus on their product development when investors go in and pressure them to do things when the market is more important to them than the actual product. Right. Okay. Interesting. That's a good perspective. Thank you so much for coming and I'm so looking forward to the panel. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks.